Um, like my best friend in town is a is a Jewish rabbi. I I don't go to lunch with him and try to figure out how to share Isaiah with him and try to convert him uh, to a messianic yeah. view of faith. So where do you think we're going to end up on all of this atonement? Um, I think more diversity yeah. in opinions, which you know also does reflect moments of the history of the church and even the New Testament itself in terms of what's going on with the cross anyway. And you know, I remember, David, a few years ago, I was sitting there um, reading, just minding, I don't even know what I was reading, but I just sort of stopped reading. I looked out the window and I said to myself, I don't understand the cross at all. I don't understand the sense of it, especially the way it's usually portrayed as a necessary payment to maybe appease God's sense of justice or wrath because the justice has been, you know, uh, impinged upon, uh, you know, that, that may be a little bit of a character, but I think a lot of people that's, that's sort of where they're coming from. So yes. um, I actually, I actually think, uh, and I've, I've thought about this a little bit. I think this specific question of the cross is going to become more and more fluid for people and uh, for good reason. And I think it's important to listen to the extent to which any biblical model of the, the purpose of the crucifixion has with it a cultural conditioning. And again, this is back to the point that everything can be explained anthropologically. It has a very ancient transactional view of what it means to be right with God. And you know, I think the New Testament puts its own certain spins on those things, one of which is the vulnerability of God. God is participating somehow in this. It was just an odd, odd thing. To me, that's a place, that's something worth developing more. But, uh, you know, the for all the diversity in the New Testament, there's still some sort of transaction happening. And is that what God is like? Or is that how people understood God, invariably, inevitably understood God at a particular point in history? And of course, that gets into all sorts of things, again, like we just talked about, like authority and, and whatnot, and, and how much does this change before it becomes unrecognizable to what's before? But I'm personally, I feel I don't have a choice but to say, okay, I don't know. I, I'm just one person. I'm not going to change the face of Christianity. I just want to try to understand this stuff. And there's there's one author I, I quote a couple of times in, in uh, my last book in Curveball. Um, Peter Todd is his name, and uh, he talks about the need for a third millennium theology. And I think that's a really good way of putting it. You know, uh, we're in a very different era today and have been for the past hundred years or so. And there's a reason why things like process theology or, you know, Tom Ord, open and relational theology, there's a reason why this stuff is around. It's basically to explain all that Christianity business within the context of what we know about physical reality, yeah. an evolving universe, you know, how long we've been here, how long the universe has been here, all that sort of stuff. And I, it's inevitable that we're going to see, I think, more and more changes. And I think a lot of people getting very nervous because of that, because they have an inherited faith that's still valuable to them. And I, and I understand that I'm not poo pooing those people. I mean, we're, we all have things like lines we won't cross. I think we, we all have something that just, nah, I'm not going to go there. Um, and some of us hit those lines earlier than others, but uh, I think this is one that's going to rub out some lines eventually. And, um, you know, maybe encourage like we're seeing today, a, 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 an entrenchment in a certain fundamentalism. Mm -hmm.